What's up guys? A uh, quick little update before the video. Um, sorry it's been such a long time since I posted. Um, I had a baby, uh, bought a house, moved into the house. Um, business, you know, regular work life just kind of taken over. Um, but yeah, so we are still building the E30. Um, it is some things have kind of changed. I've got coilovers on the way. I'm getting ready to bring everything back to my home uh, so I can work on it here. And yeah, so probably won't be seeing many more videos of me in the shop. Um, but yeah, hopefully um, things get to get going again. So car probably won't be ready till next year, 2022. Um, even driving, I wouldn't call it ready. But um, so yeah. That's about it. But this video, um, putting together the bottom end, um, it's a lot of fun. Um, it's not. It's kind of intimidating. It's not too bad if you take your time and um, do your research and do it right. So, that being said, here it is. What's up? I've got my BR6 bottom end here. Uh, getting ready to measure out the main bearing clearances. So we've got the crankshaft, sh the crankshaft sitting behind me. Get you a little close up. I'm sure a couple people are probably gonna ask what this oil plug is right here. Um, that is to block off if you haven't watched any of the other videos, um, this is to block off a stock oil pump drive shaft. It needs to be blocked off because it's sealed at the intermediate shaft side and the pump seals it at the bottom. It's basically, um, there's an oil galley that runs through it. Um, needs to be pressurized, so that needs to be capped off. So, did that. I think it's a 20 millimeter uh, breeze plug or galley plug or expansion plug or I don't know, they got a bunch of different names, but yeah, so put that there. Um, yeah, like I said, gonna be checking the main bearing clearances. Uh, I got the main bearings, standard, Glyco, um, they're like an OEM bearing. I've got new uh, main bearing bolts because they're stretch bolts. Uh, I decided not to go with ARP on those for now because plenty of people have been making quite a bit of power on just the stock bolts and they're considerably cheaper. Gotta throw in this side of the bearings. Spray down the crankshaft with some air, make sure there's no uh, um, particles or anything on there. Set it down, tighten up the main caps, not do a full stretch on them. It's really important is to not do a full stretch if you're gonna do any stretch. Um, I'm gonna bring it down to the factory torque before, um, I wanna say it's like 30 Newton meters with a half turn uh, to bring it to final spec. Um, I'm gonna bring it to 30 newton meters and see what happens. See what my uh, I've got plastic gauge. See what those read. If those read good, then I will tighten it all the way up, button that up. I'm still waiting on rod bearings. My buddy Carlos is got them on order. They should be here hopefully within the next couple of days, and I'll be able to keep going. So, <sighs> but yeah, I'll kind of let you guys see the process. So I'm gonna start out putting the bearings on, or putting this half of the bearing shells in, spray off the crank, set the crank in, throw the main caps on, after I throw my plastic gauge in there. And so I may throw my plastic gauge in on the top side, I'm not 100% sure yet, but we'll see. Sorry about recording this on a microphone I haven't really used before, but so right here I am uh, just cleaning up all the bearings. Uh, I noticed that there was a kind of a packing grease um, on all the bearing surfaces. I just got some acetone and a clean rag and wiped all that off um, just to ensure that there's no dirt or anything stuck to that grease and make sure everything is seated um, into the um, as well as after all of my plastic plate and 
about three quarters of an inch strips so I can place them on each journal uh, so I can set the crank in, tighten everything down. And uh, then once that's done, uh, pull the crank back out and then I'll be able to read all of the bearing clearances on all of the journals. and I'm using a torque glue to make sure I get an even and consistent torque on all of these bolts. They're brand new OEM uh, stretch bolts. So what I'm doing is I am tightening them down to the torque and not doing the uh, half turn uh, that it calls for afterwards for the stretch. I am not Pre-stretching whether a one-time use bolt, you want to stretch them uh, again and again, they'll start to weaken and you could break a bolt that way. Always follow McQuince. You don't want to put excess uh, on the crankshaft while you're turning it down. Typical main cap out, mating from one side to the other. Um, it really isn't on the manufacturer though. I would highly recommend always checking with manufacturer specifications. Well, I uh, got the crank all torqued down, um, just to torque, I didn't do the stretch part of it. Um, everything's right around two to two and a half thousandths of an inch of clearance, um, which is close enough for me. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and run it. I did realize I forgot to put the oil squirters in, so I gotta pop these bearings off, throw those oil squirters in. Um, bearings back on after I clean off all the plastic gauge. Almost said plastic dip. <laughs> but anyways, um, and then lube everything up, throw the crank on, lube the other side of the bearings on the caps, um, throw those on, throw a little bit more um, assembly lube, or not assembly lube, but fastener lube. It's ultra torque, uh, ARP lube on the hardware and uh, tighten those up. I have got rod bearings coming here in the next couple days and uh, yeah that'll still probably be a part of this video so I will show you guys what I'm doing and if you have any questions don't forget to comment. Thanks. I would like to apply a generous amount um, of that Permatex lube on everything. Uh, you can have too little, you can't really have too much besides making a mess everywhere. Um, but yeah, what you can't see, um, I'm actually putting it on the other side of the bearings as well as I put the main caps on, um, making sure there's ample amount on there. You don't want it to run dry. Um, I will be running dry sump, so I will be able to pry this or prime this engine pretty for um, first start. So I'm not super worried, but you just gotta make sure that you're not um, rotating, you know, the crankshaft over and everything um, excessively while it doesn't have a bunch of oil in it. I've got all the rings gaps now, um, ARP bolts installed, kind of, um, rod bolts. Finally got my rod bearings a couple days ago, uh, 
had some issues with my daily so that's what's been preventing me from finishing putting this motor together but tonight I've got a little bit of free time so got some motor oil um, this is just 530 uh, to loop up the pistons and cylinder walls before dropping the pistons in there um, I've got ultra slick for bearing surfaces I'm um, also got some plastic gauge here just to double check clearances as I button up this bottom end. I've also got my ARP head studs here. Um, not sure if I'm going to get to putting the head on today or not, but I ha do have the head studs as well as the gasket. Head is sitting upstairs, but got to take all these caps back off, throw the top side of the rod bearing in, and then drop each piston in the cylinder down to the crankshaft, go through, put the cap on, that sort of thing. Um, once again, kind of tedious. Once you do the first one, the, all the next ones are about the same. So um, I'm going to try to compress the rings by hand. Uh, I don't have a good spring compressor for the VR6, um, but we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. So um, before I start sticking the pistons in, um, I'm going to take a lint-free rag, kind of soak it in some motor oil and wipe down each of these cylinders. Make sure there's oil covering every square inch of it as best I can. Just helps start to build that barrier in between the piston and the uh, cylinder wall. I will also oil up the piston so you'll see me do that. Um, and then I will drop them in. Uh, I'll use the ultra slick on the bearing surfaces like I said. Um, as far as I'm aware they don't really recommend that stuff for cylinder walls. Um, so, yeah, uh, I've always done motor oil, so that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to start assembling and go from there. I'll be honest with you, um, in a few seconds you're probably going to see me take my gloves off. There were a couple times where I was uh, trying to compress the piston rings by hand with the gloves on and my glove would get caught underneath the ring and it would literally rip a tiny piece of rubber off and it would stick in between uh, like the compression ring and the first oil control ring. Um, so uh, I realized it did that, I pulled them back out. I uh, made sure I got everything out of there um, and I quit using the gloves. Um, might be a little hard on your fingers doing it this way, but that is what I ended up doing because like I said, I did have a couple issues with pieces of the glove ripping off and actually getting in between the compression and oil control rings, which is gonna cause some issues later on down the road. Just got the pistons in on the VR6. I'm gonna flip it over now and check clearances. So I'm doing basically the same thing um, I did uh, for the main bearings, um, except with the ARP bolts, you can go ahead and tighten them all the way. Um, they are reusable. Um, they're not stretch bolts, so um, you can tighten them all the way. Uh, one thing to find is you want to have um, your basically clearance of 
Um, it's a thousandth per inch of journal diameter. Uh, so just keep that in mind. That's a basic rule um, applying over most engines. Um, As always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if these videos are helpful. Um, or yeah, so uh, see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys.